Koreans now. Um, and as the world contains pandemic, I think we'll start bringing tourism back. But in the meantime, you know, we have to be able to sustain our economy. We're working for more permanent solutions in terms of economic industry uh, because it's very evident you cannot just rely on tourism. So we're looking to bring in more data uh, industries, more telecommunications industries. It's going to work really well because uh, we have the infrastructure bill that gives a lot of financial help in broadband improving broadband in our island. And what I want to do is have broadband in every corner of our island. Military buildup, like I said, is pumping billions of dollars into the economy. I'm going to take advantage of that, and that's what's happening. Uh, I'm, I'm going to work with the legislature to give these monies uh, to uh, make sure that public service is uh, efficient, serves the people, and, and that uh, is providing the necessary safety net and services for our people, and work very closely with the private sector so that our whole community, both public and private sector, will have a vibrant economy again. You know? but, and now I'm feeling very confident that we are on the road to that. I felt sure in what my actions were to save the lives of our people, that I feel very sure that we're, what we are doing and where we're going and how we're going to get there is going to be done. It will be done. This is Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, and I approve this message. KUAM News Headlines is presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust, serving Micronesia since 1938. Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus Hyundai, home of the Kona electric vehicle, an electric heart with an SUV soul. Test drive yours today at Cars Plus. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. Ahead on Your News Leader, one medical center president and concerned doctor issues a letter advocating for the most precious and vulnerable, mothers and babies and the shortage of OBGYNs on island. Plus, our lawmakers continue to go section by section of the fiscal year 2023 budget. And Mariana Southern Airways embarked on their first flight with an inaugural ceremony in ribbon cutting. These stories and more, right now on KUAM News Primetime. And good evening, everyone. Welcome to Primetime. I'm Nestor Del Canto. Glad you can join us. Guam is facing a new health care crisis, a shortage of OBGYNs. Dr. Hoa Wen of AMC Clinic released an open letter to the public saying, we're down to just seven physicians who specialize in the care of expectant mothers and their babies. And he says of the seven, only three are full-time and the other four are part-time and semi-retired. He says that creates a critical situation for many mothers-to-be. Women that uh, are pregnant at this point, uh, so they cannot get in uh, to any clinic, uh, either private or public, for prenatal care. And, you know, that's very important. Uh, they either go to the home pregnancy while seeing a doctor and show it with OB at GMA for delivery, which is going to be high risk, or, or they get into a clinic on the late, the second, or third trimester, which is... Uh, they miss a lot of work up to make sure that the fetus uh, are healthy. Dr. Wen says the current situation requires immediate help, which means bringing in outside OBGYNs on a temporary basis, like what was done for the emergency nurses at the height of the pandemic. Two things, right? You got a number one is COVID GMH for delivery uh, to help out the current OBGYN uh, house call and also um, to staff some of the mid level or OB in the clinic level, either a public health or private clinic, in order for them to, to have, you know, to give access to, um, to the uh, women that are currently pregnant and need prenatal care. He says the long-term solution is for public health and GMH to aggressively recruit younger OBGYNs and midwives because the average age of the current crop is near or at retirement age and there's no really younger ones on the horizon. 
On Friday, former Guam Police Department officer Paul John Santos was sentenced to 15 years behind bars for sexual, a sexual assault that occurred in 2014. As KOAM reported, Santos had sex with a woman who was soliciting escort services on Craigslist. Rather than pay for the sex, he used his authority as a police officer to threaten to put her behind bars for prostitution if she didn't cooperate with him. During the trial, the victim testified she was violently raped in 2017. He was sentenced to 21 years. In April 2020, the Supreme Court handed down a decision and vacated three of his convictions, including bribery, one count of first-degree criminal sexual conduct, and one count of third-degree criminal sexual conduct. The minimum sentence for the charges that remain was 15 years. Slowly but surely, senators are making their way through the $1.02 billion fiscal year 2023 budget bill. They're now into a section by section review and identifying specific appropriations of special interest to them. Here's more. Senators have agreed in principle not to spend over the adopted $1 billion revenue projection, but there's still some money to play with, such as the rainy day fund that Senator Tello Tidegui has pointed out is overfunded. Speaker Therese Terlahi had an amendment that would restore a key drug detox and rehab program known as New Beginnings to its full budget needs, plus an additional 100000 tacked on by Senator Sabina Perez. If we can't stop the drugs at the border, we have a crisis on our hands and we need to help these families, help these individuals and continue to provide services while we shore up our borders and, and stop the drugs from coming in. Another amendment by Senator Talina Nelson would appropriate 104000 to cover the cost of interment at the Guam Veterans Cemetery for National Guard members and reservists. It follows a federal law meant to bring equity to all service members. One of the main concerns of our veterans is the veterans cemeteries. And so uh, this is a, an unfunded mandate. However, this is a requirement if we are going to continue to receive grant appropriations from the federal government. Nelson says the local vet cemetery is expected to get about $4 million for needed improvements, although future maintenance and other costs will come out of the local budget. And lawmakers will continue their agency-by-agency agency review on Monday. They have until August 31st to submit a budget bill to the governor. Travel requirements imposed by the Korean and Japanese governments are putting a damper on the recent uptick in visitor arrivals from those markets. Guam Hotel and Restaurant Association President Mary Rhodes says they were hoping for a bigger boost this summer, but an increase in COVID cases in our top source markets has lowered expectations. We've had a couple of setbacks, as you know, um, just with some of the recent announcements, especially with Japan and also with Korea. So it actually has impacted our uh, arrival numbers for the summer. Um, and we, although we had a really good, you know, reopening in June and a really good July as compared to previous years, um, you know, the hope was that we would really continue with that momentum going forward. The Korean government recently required that returning passengers also have to be COVID tested upon their arrival. As a result of those government actions, she says load factors are expected to be lower in the next couple of months. It's really, uh, you know, created a challenge uh, that we weren't expecting this summer. Um, but we really hope, uh, you know, there, we really hope that the, the road to that travel recovery uh, will take place in uh, the latter part of Q3 into Q4. Road says the hotel industry continues to get a boost from military travelers, though, and from federal contractors who come in for the military buildup. Mariana Southern Airways took its first flight from Saipan to Guam on Thursday. They plan to offer up to five daily flights to regional travelers. And as our regional correspondent Tomas Manglonia reports, that could include trips to the Northern Islands. Here's more. It's very nice. A beautiful flight today. Uh, you know, it was uh, smooth. So unfortunately, we had to deviate a little bit because of a big jet coming in. So we were a few minutes late getting in. But other than that, it was a wonderful flight. Mariana Southern Airways completed its map route with its first flight to Guam from Saipan on Thursday, marking a watershed moment for regional travel. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero welcomed its landing. There are a lot of businesses uh, from here that have businesses in Saipan, even in uh, Tinian and Rota. Uh, and it's also especially, I think, uh, significant for uh, those islands to be able to have 
um, airlines that can move cargo, airlines that can medevac, and also airlines that can move passengers. CNMI Governor Rob Torres and Rhoda Senator Victor Holcomb were its first passengers, celebrating the investment that now expands travel to Saipan, Tinian, and Rhoda. Torres says plans for travel to the Northern Islands are also in the works. It's a great opportunity for, for everyone, uh, for the folks in the CNMI probably the most because now we have more reliable um, air services. The airline plans to launch up to five flights a day from Guam to the NMI. This uh, completes what we're trying to do here uh, initially, but we've got more things coming. We're looking forward to adding flights from Guam direct to Tinian and Guam direct to Rota, and hopefully that will be coming up in the next few months. So for people that perhaps live in Saipan that come in from the Honolulu United con uh, connection, they have to stay overnight in Guam. Uh, they can't get home that night. We'll be able to make that happen. We'll be able to make that connection happen. We'll be able to connect people to the flights uh, uh, from Saipan uh, to the Philippines here over Guam without an overnight connection. It comes at a time when the islands are still reeling from the pandemic's economic blow. It doesn't matter where you're located, but if you don't have strong air links or a strong sea link or a strong rail link, depending on what your geography is and what services you, it's awfully hard to get your economy to grow. Tomas Manglonia for KUAM News. And still to come on your news leader, leader, we take a closer look at UOG's 70th anniversary exhibit at the Guam Museum. That story and more. Please stay with us. It's an honor to stand behind what the great governor, Lieutenant Governor Island has had. Lou and Josh don't only deserve to be our governor and lieutenant governor, we need them to be our governor. What does it take to be a leader? It's about making a decision and sticking with it. And I'm telling you, you have to vote Lou and Josh. The most striking characteristic of our governor is she is kind, a genuine, determined passion, and at the core of it all, the qualities that make a great leader. I was blessed enough to intern for LT. His experience, which is rooted in his love for the people of Guam, is what truly sets him apart. When we win because we are going to win, Subscribe to our KOM News Digest, our weekly email newsletter with all kinds of information straight to your inbox. Just subscribe and we'll make sure to keep you informed and entertained with news from the KOM News team, what to watch on NBC and CBS, and the latest promotions from KOM Communications. Go to KOM.com, click on the newsletter tab at the top of the homepage, register, and you're all set. Brought to you by Uno Go, Guam On Demand. Welcome back. One of three base load generators that were offline is now back and no load shedding is anticipated by GPA. The PD number eight power plant was brought back online yesterday morning and is currently putting out 43 megawatts to the island wide power system. The 66 megawatt Cabris two unit is expected to return to service Saturday evening. GPA says more leaks were found after pressure testing that still need to be repaired and the 45 megawatt PD nine base load generator is still offline while it's being converted to be able to use low sulfur diesel fuel. High Learn Academy Charter School is gearing up to welcome their students back for the new school year. Daniel Perez has more. 740 Island Lions are expected to come back for the new school year at their new Dededo campus, but before welcoming their students back and welcoming them into their new home, how have the teachers and staff been preparing? Chief Academic Officer Rachel State gave the rundown. 
preparation could look different for everybody. It's preparing their classrooms, it's preparing their welcome letters, it's preparing um, what their themes are gonna be, their lesson plans, grade level um, planning and prepping, um, and then figuring out like how they're gonna communicate with parents, what their goals are for the year. Um, so for teachers, it's a mixture of trainings, um, teacher orientation, um, our new teachers getting, um, up to date with kind of what our program is, introducing themselves to their coworkers, um, and then the fun part of like prepping your classroom and um, just the anticipation of being able to welcome a brand new set of students every year. And since the Lions have a new home, they need to make sure their students get used to the new facilities. We decided to um, open the school year in a staggered schedule, and what that means is um, on Tuesday, August 23rd, we are welcoming our kindergarten and first grade students only. And then on Thursday, August 25, second and third grade will join the fun. And then the last group, our fourth and fifth grade students, will be joining us on Wednesday, August 31st. And to do so, doing that helps kind of mitigate any sort of confusion. It helps the younger kids who've never been on a school campus before, especially like our kindergarten kids, kind of get used to the flow of the routine um, without being inundated with all 740 student, students at one time. As for the curriculum, it involves the basic subjects mixed in with some fun electives. We teach all of the core subjects, which includes um, English language arts. We have a separate reading and writing track as well. Um, mathematics, science, social studies. Some of our uh, electives that every grade level participates in um, includes mental health, robotics, physical education. Um, we are still looking forward to incorporating agriculture maybe in the next coming years um, as we settle into the campus, but those are pretty much the subject areas that we covered during our regular school days. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. And as part of celebrating their 70th year, 70th year anniversary, the University of Guam opened up an exhibit at the Guam Museum to showcase their accomplishments. Here's more. To commemorate their 70th year anniversary, the University of Guam launched an exhibit at the Guam Museum to showcase their accomplishments, which has been transforming lives and advancing communities through their mission of Ina, Discubri, and Setbi, otherwise known as to enlighten, to discover, and to serve. UOG President Dr. Thomas Kreis gave his two cents on the exhibit. It's a really great exhibit. I, this was my first time seeing it this evening, so I had the joy of uh, discovery that everybody else had in coming in. It's, it's really quite a big chunk of the museum that's dedicated to this exhibit, and we have a lot of uh, material objects and tremendous information on the walls. We have QR codes. You can find out yet more about uh, the history and, and the uh, impact of this university over 70 years. The exhibit is open now until October 15th, so residents are invited to check it out and take a glimpse into the works of UOG. The public can come and see what's possible here and to see what's happened at the university over this period of time. So I hope to get as many people here as we can to, to see and appreciate. And you'll see a lot of faces of people you know, um, including every employee of the university on a really cool, big picture wall. There is no entrance fee to visit the UOG exhibit, but Dr. Kreis does want visitors to take the time and appreciate all UOG has done throughout the 70 years. It's a great opportunity for the people of Guam to see what they've invested in over these years and the great return on that investment uh, with tremendous chance to transform lives and advance communities, which is what we're all about. Daniel Perez reporting for KUAM News. And if you plan on heading out to the beaches this weekend, be advised the Department of Agriculture's Division of Aquatic and Wildlife Resources Fisheries wants to remind residents to be on the lookout for box jellyfish. From August 19th to the 22nd, please be cautious. Je the jellyfish can still sting even if washed on the beach and dead. If box jellyfish are seen, please notify DAWR Fisheries at 671-735-0289. Dave Delgado is up next with sports. Don't go anywhere. Half a day. I'm Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, and I'm proud to report that we have opened a new relief center to help you as we continue to recover from the pandemic. From healthcare to welfare, childcare, housing, and utilities, we have a wide variety of direct relief programs available to help you. This central location provides direct access to most of our public assistance programs under one roof. Our friendly staff are ready to help you through the application process. 
We are working to ensure you get the assistance you need to receive the relief available to you and your family. This means more support to help you meet the cost of living and give you more money in your pocket. We are improving how government is working. Our administration continues to invest in Guam's future, delivering relief and driving our recovery. Visit the Government of Guam Relief Center at the third floor of the Bank of Hawaii building in Hagatnia, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or call us at 671-475-2060. Don't need a work, babe. Keep the smile on your face. The moments you can't replace. And I'll be around. Wherever life takes you, we're always here for you. Calvo's Insurance. Count on us for life. During the pandemic, um, that's the time that I was were closed for one year. So the, the payment that me and my daughter we bring home, let's just say 500 a month or 600, my rent is 850. When I contact the rental assistant, they say that I'm approved. I really so happy. Kiri so tabur, mari di God, kiri so yeri God. Kren me de Governor Lulian Guerrero and Charles Trevor Neri Arabas ikerai. Kren ke begin arinis mi dori Arabas esa pani Filipin. Kren took pani be any kind of lasilality. Really, she really helped us out for the for the rent. Kiri so tabur. God bless, Governor. Yes. This ad was paid for by the Department of Administration using federal funds. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Master Noli Kaluik celebrated 20 years of teaching Taekwondo on island with the first Korean Consuls Cup. The Guam Taekwondo Center Black Belt Demonstration Team opened the competition, breaking boards with punches and kicks. There were a total of 30 competitors in the sixth annual weapons competition. The first Taekwondo speed kicking tournament featured 72 athletes. Master Noli has promoted over 135 students to black belt and has taught over 2,000 students. Turning over to some golf news, the second NKGI Junior Golf Tournament is scheduled for Saturday, September 3rd at the Starts Guam Golf Course. Register now at www.nkgigolf.com. The tournament is open to junior players ages 5 to 14 years old. The format is individual stroke play. Entry fee is $50 plus $20 for green fee. For more information, call 988-7272. In futsal news, a new champion will be crowned in the Budweiser Men's Futsal League with the league playoffs beginning Monday evening at the Estumbo Gym. The undefeated Islanders FC finished at the top of bracket A with an 8-3 win over the Bank of Guam Strikers, finishing in the second place spot in bracket A and advancing to the playoffs with the Islanders FC as Quality Distributors FC after the team's 5-1 win over Moses. Winners of the playoff matches will move on to the 2022 championship match, and the losing teams will play for third place. The championship and constellation matches will be played at the Estumbo Gym on August 25th. Starting September 10th, GABA Pony Baseball will be starting the Fall Coat Palomino Baseball League. All games will be played at the Triple J Guam Baseball Academy Fields. Located on Ukudu High School's campus, cost of the league is $100 per team. Teams consist of players ages 13 to 18 years old. GABA will provide all league officials balls, lighting expense, and field. There'll be a manager's meeting on August 26 at 6 p.m. at Capriciosa in Aganya. To register, please contact GABA at GBA at GuamBaseball.com or Bill Bennett at 483-6500 or Mike Soderquist at 858-1238. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. Lunches. 
snacks. We got diapers for baby girl. Oh, 715, we gotta go. Uh, bread, milk, gas for work. Remember to grab Joe Boy a birthday present. Mm -hmm. Half a day. Hey Molly, how much do you pay for daycare for the kids? Uh, over 600 a month, it's expensive. Did you hear about the governor's program that covers up to 675 a month for childcare? Well, that would be a lifesaver with the rising cost of everything. Check guamchildcare.com to apply. We qualified. I even booked an appointment for someone to walk me through the process. guamchildcare.com. Okay, thanks, I'll apply today. This ad is paid for with federal funds administered by DPHSS. Guam was once home to over 12 native species of forest birds, each with their own unique sound, color, and role to play in our ecosystem. However, the arrival of the brown tree snake has threatened their existence. Today, only three of these species still exist in the wild. But what was once lost can be restored. Join the Department of Agriculture's efforts to restore our ecosystem. It is only through partnerships with various organizations and the community that we can give our native birds a future. Support snake suppression. And we wrap up the show with your birthday shout outs. Happy birthday to Fatna Asanoma. Happy birthday, sis. Love you and miss you from Las Vegas. May the Lord continue to bless you every day. And a happy birthday to Jaden John Cruz. Happy 10th birthday, Jaden John Cruz. We love you forever. And as always, you can be a part of our Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club by checking out KOM.com. And it's that time of the week where we announce the winner of a Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Cake. And the birthday winner for today, Michael Wayne Deep Pocket Snipe. And that's our show for tonight. Thanks for watching. Please stay safe, everyone. Half a day, guys. We're back. One Micronesia podcast, another week, another episode. And for this one, man, I'm so excited. Uh, we shot Culture Club. Yes. That was fantastic. That was a fun <laughs> shoot. But I was like, you know, it, for Culture Club, it's always this five-minute uh, digital segment that's yeah. just out there for people to watch and, and get inspired and get, get to find her and, and what she does and, and the, the products that she puts out. Beautiful Thank uh, you. products. Uh, Thank so, you. But I'm like, but we, the, the talk needs to... Mm -hmm. I wanted to literally get to know you yeah. and talk about how it all started, like get in depth and and, and just a whole a, a longer conversation, yeah. pretty much. So with the, on the podcast with me today, I do have uh, Christian, Christian Leon Guerrero. Mm -hmm. uh, Christian, thank you so much and welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm happy to be here. Thank you. Um, so, you know, when we start, we get to know our guests. Mm -hmm. um, so let's start there. Tell us more about, about you, where you grew, grew up and stuff like that. Let's start there. Well, I was born and raised here nice. in Guahan. Um, I relocated to Texas in 2015. Mm -hmm. And um, I came back for my grandmother's uh, funeral. And when I came back, I told myself I was never coming back home ever again, right? Because mm -hmm. I was like, look at, you know, you see like all the, um, you know, like the lack of upkeep, right? Mm -hmm. or, or you just feel like maybe the mainland has like more opportunities. Right. And then I lost my mother shortly after, oh, sorry. and then I had to fly back home again mm. to bury her here. And um, when I flew back to Texas, uh, I started to kind of question, you know, where I really should be. And uh, I decided to kind of ease my missing mm -hmm. home with uh, sterling silver jewelry. So I thought, okay, let's just open up a business. Let's just sell like beach theme jewelry. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I only did one drop of that before I found uh, 
other cultural artists on Instagram, mm-hmm. and I was really just blown away. I, I ran into a bunch of carvers, and um, the way that they displayed our culture, it was like captivating, mm-hmm. you know? And it was pretty much like uh, undeniable, like, wow, we're really here. Almost 4,000 years later, we're mm-hmm. really doing this. And it just, it was so motivating. And that's what pretty much got me into carving, was wow. learning about all of these people that are my generation, mm-hmm. my age, doing this and doing their work to perpetuate our culture through wearable art. So that's awesome. I haven't stopped since. I, I threw the whole concept of uh-huh. sterling silver jewelry away, and I'm like, we're not doing that. Uh-huh. And this is this is all I do now. Nice. Yeah. And we're, we're going to get to that part in, 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 in the, the next part of our, of our little talk here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but let's kind of take it back. I mean, you talk about you grew up here, you mm-hmm. moved to the States. Mm-hmm. Uh, so talk about that 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 whole transition of of you know an island girl from Guam Ooh. and then now you now you're in the states now you're living you're probably in a, a community where you don't see much or, or maybe you do no, have no, a com- was no. it see so let's talk about no. that experience yeah you know, it was very uh, <laughs> when they say culture shock that's mm-hmm. an understatement because it's like everything you thought you knew Mm -hmm. it doesn't exist anymore in Uh this in this part of the world right so um it was even it was even crazy simple things like i at one time i was a preschool teacher and um i had got taco bell and i went to give i offered my coworkers Mm -hmm. some food and they were like you just want to give it to me Mm -hmm. but here it's like it's normal right it's like like (laughs) you offer anybody anything here and (laughs) so um, the heat, I, I came in the middle of fall, or, uh, what is it, uh, winter, mm-hmm. and that was insane. I was like, what in the world is this? And then um, the the summers are horrible. There's no 96 degrees in the shade. And, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's not many Chamorro people there, at least not in the city that I mm-hmm. live in. Um, it was always just work and home and work and home mm-hmm. and... You know, it's there. You can't just go drive to the beach. I think the closest beach is like eight hours away. Wow. And yeah. whereas to here is like what ten right. minutes away. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it was a very strange place to be, mm-hmm. and um, just like a lot of people, we we left for you know the quote unquote better opportunities, mm-hmm. and yeah, it's. I'm just I'm happy to come back home. I'm just really really excited to move home for good. Yeah. That's good and. And it, it's I've I've talked to so many people on the interview and they, mm-hmm. they always say the same thing. It's like, you know, of course you, you talk about you moving out, the family moving out mm-hmm. for for better opportunities mm-hmm. out there. But at one point in time, and everybody said this, you know, at one point in time you, you tend to to, to, to to long for yeah. the, for the islands and, really and long do. for your culture and your your family. And, mm-hmm. and by one point in time you're like, okay, I think I'm I think mm-hmm. I'm good. And now I think. Going back home is, is the yeah, next step. Yeah, I'm ready to come home. Yeah, That's awesome. And you're back home. How, yeah. how's, it, how's it going so far? <laughs> I don't want to get on the plane and head back, but it's been really, really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I would say like being in the mainland, it's a lot of, uh, you know, you got to constantly hustle. You got to yeah. be on the grind. Yeah, but, yeah. you know, um, I think that's the one good thing it taught me being back there was like, yes, a good work ethic, mm-hmm. but now I guess I'm kind of smarter with that. And nice. I can, I started a business back mm-hmm. there, so now I know how to have a business here. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to, and that's good. to move and back home with it, the things that I've learned mm-hmm. back there. And, and you, you, you split time between here and Saipan. You, you have family in Saipan as well? I do have family in Saipan, so yeah, we're trying what's, to... What side of the family is from... Uh, both my, my mother's side, her oh, parents. Nice. Yeah. Oh, they're wow. both from Saipan. Yeah. See, that's amazing. Like you, you were born and raised in Guam. You're also yeah. from Saipan. So you go, you go back and forth. And I, you know what? I've only been to Saipan a handful of times, but that was when I was a kid. So I'm excited to explore my motherland mm-hmm. as an adult. Wow. Yeah. It, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be that a different, uh, you're going to see it in a different uh, perspective oh, yeah. for, you know, and now you, you get to appreciate things more mm-hmm. and, and you get to visit yeah. the different, uh, you know, the different um, landmarks and, and different 
places and yeah. the cultural and, and the history so. the mm-hmm. history I, you know we're all one people but i feel like saipan and guam we have different historical events mm-hmm. right and maybe some different traditions if you will right so i'm excited to learn more about that my father my grandfather from my mother's side is actually part carolinian so wow. i'm excited mm-hmm. to try to connect with maybe some carolinian people in saipan right. kind learn of the language learn. too because that's a that's yeah. a whole other yeah. uh side of the chamorro language as well yeah. and you, the customs yep. too mm-hmm. yeah Oh, so. I'm, excited <laughs> I'm excited for myself. <laughs> like, like yes, we're excited, and we're not going to be back home. I mean, I think the next time we're going to be home is when we move mm-hmm. for good. So I'm trying to soak up this whole entire I'll three do months. It. Do it. Yes, I'm <laughs> so happy. All right, so this is like, uh, we're going to take a break. Okay, uh, but when we come back, we're definitely going to get into the business. I know you kind of taught you touched you on it just a little bit of mm-hmm. how how you got inspired to start it. Yeah. Uh, so we'll talk about that coming up in just a little bit. We're going to take a break. We'll right, we'll be right back. Buenas, I'm Amanda Shelton. Whether creating the first Veterans Bill of Rights, increasing scholarship funding for college students, creating the Opioid Recovery Fund, providing pandemic relief to companies, or pushing to raise the cost of living for our Manamku, my time as a lawmaker has always been about empowering people. Please re-elect Amanda Shelton for Senator, Johnny Cole Torres Treasurer. Every person in this world is unique. I'm a celebrity makeup artist and a content creator. I'm the vice president of our company and a very proud grandma. I'm a Filipino and I am seven years old. I would say I am always an eternal student. I define beauty as being empowered, just feeling beautiful as who you are. I am a Chamorro, born and raised in Guam. It is valuing our differences, respecting one another, and sharing a deep love for our island. Is what makes us one people. Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's Auto Appearance Specialist. Over 20 years of experience. Hafri and Mogatheen, welcome back. One Micronesia podcast. We're still here with uh, Christian Leon Guerrero, uh, the owner of Saltwater Empress, mm-hmm. an amazing uh, business that you started. Thank you, you do jewelry. You, you you don't just sell it; you actually make it and sell mm-hmm. it. That's that's so beautiful, yeah. and that's uh, that's that's why we got you on Culture Club to to to, to talk about that. Um, uh, that side of an aspect of what you do is the the, uh, the carving side and mm-hmm. and, and, and selling uh, tomorrow um, uh, jewelry. That's mm-hmm. amazing. So let's talk about that. You touched touched on it, it when we first started mm-hmm. of how you got inspired to start. So how's mm-hmm. the business and and kind of like kind of talk about it from the beginning, like how it all started. You mean like the carving yeah. process? Yeah. Okay. Right. Um, so the carving, I think the first thing we have to do when we want to carve is we have to do research. Mm-hmm. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of learning about the stories of the past, right? So we have to learn about motifs and uh, uh, pottery designs, even the legends, mm-hmm. right? So um, the creative process, I it's it's kind of hard to explain. You know, you kind of get, I kind of get inspired. Uh, and I just pick up a random, you know, material, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what can I do with this? You know, how can I translate the stories that I just learned about mm-hmm. through shell, right? Mm-hmm. Through carving. So um, it's a lot of. Uh, <laughs> I'm just thinking about our. Oh, you're getting it. Yeah. You, just, you can just take us, you know, <laughs> process like like inch by inch of what you know how how it's how, done. Yeah. yeah. So with uh, 
with the sunahi like this, mm-hmm. let's mm-hmm. say we have to, uh, we take giant clam, which is what we call mm-hmm. uh, hema, mm-hmm. and we got to slice it and we create a wow. crescent moon. So this specifically, this one's a double-sided one. Um, this one tells the story of, uh, my husband and I coming mm-hmm. back to culture. So this is this is a land. This sing- symbolizes our culture. And wow. then the back of it, there's mm-hmm. a there's the two waves, mm-hmm. and then the m- human spirit uh, carved into it. But uh, when we do the pendant, uh, we got to cut it out, and then uh, we draw some patterns on it. And it's a lot of uh, figuring out, you know, what. Uh, what pattern is uh, higher and then mm-hmm. what pattern is lower and then with the beads specifically they come as raw form they wow. come as full spondylus uh, mm-hmm. shells with the thorns on it and everything so we have to dethorn it wow we have to of course make them round and mm-hmm. make the beads and then we have to level each bead off at least as, at least that's my process mm-hmm. right so we level each bead off we polish it you know sand it string it up and yeah, it's something like this because I, I like to, you know, it's, I, I really am a slow carver. Mm-hmm. I don't like to rush a lot of things. Um, something like this, if we're doing like even a full uh, strand of spondylus, mm-hmm. it could take me over a week if I sit, wow. if I sat down. And um, and that's just because we're, we're fairly new, you know, so uh, we just started carving not too long ago. So it takes me quite a bit of time. It's a lot of effort. It's a lot of uh dedication and it discipline to sit yeah. there and you know sometimes i i, I ask guel and guelu like <laughs> why this <laughs> because now you know of course i love it now i i yeah. appreciate it so much but sometimes it's like dang they really sat here yeah with no power tools yes. at all yes and if you go like into the guam museum you can mm-hmm. see all you know the actual artifacts mm-hmm. the beads and stuff and it's so clean it's so pristine so the fact that we are having difficulty or struggles with modern tools it makes you appreciate their process yes. without and it you wonder like what you know what their processes is, is even probably yeah. uh longer or oh yeah you know to do because now with tools things the time that it takes to to kind of like shave down to carve kind of like is literally cuts it off a whole lot and but back then you talk you you think about um our our ancestors sitting down like you said like no no power power. at the beach or at the underneath the huts and you know carving out um jewelry is just mind mind blowing yeah there's there's something for us feels so special. I, it's hard to describe unless you do it yourself. But you, I feel such a deep connection mm-hmm. when that power tool is on. And, you know, we, we like to say that we literally are risking our lives out here trying to mm-hmm. make cultural joy because anything can go wrong. Like you you can sand your fingers off. You can cut yourself. Mm-hmm. Things fly. You've got to wear protective gear. So it's it when I hold these creations in my hand you know of course during the creation process I can't sometimes I'm in tears like truthfully because I just think about how they left these artifacts for us to find this was part of their identity Mm -hmm. and to know that almost 4,000 years later we are still telling their stories Mm -hmm. it's an it's an honor to sit there with the power to it with the dremel and help bring these you know creations back to life and in a more modern way really awesome yeah so you know let's talk about um some of the reactions that you've got um Mm -hmm. over time through the 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 jewelry and the creations that you've gotten Mm -hmm. people have you know have have purchased it and and talk about how their reactions to um the to those um art uh creations yeah so i think um you know after we we complete a piece we do take the time to try to you know photograph them in a beautiful way and display them on our page and it's insane that there are a ton of people who have been following us or who started following us found us on instagram Mm -hmm. and they didn't know what spondylus was they didn't know what giant clam was they didn't know anything about cultural jewelry especially the people who live in the diaspora Mm -hmm. in the mainland or elsewhere um you know they've never had the opportunity to see something like it in real life it's uh, it's hard for them to find back mm-hmm. there. Um, so when they, they have it in their hands, it sparks something in them and it tells me to keep doing it mm-hmm. because sometimes, you know, they cry, they're in tears as well. They 
they want it either to feel more connected to our culture from so far away. Mm-hmm. It's it can be so lonely living far away, even if you have a bunch of family and friends and you know, the fact that we're able to give them this gift of mm-hmm. cultural joy to help them kind of connect, it's it's an amazing thing and we get such positive uh, feedback and we are constantly being thanked in our DMs, like, mm-hmm. thank you for doing this work. And I'm like, no, thank you, <laughs> you know, because mm-hmm. I, I can do this work all day, all day long, mm-hmm. but without you guys, you know what I mean? Like, we would just be carving because we love to, mm-hmm. but it's, it, it is an actual business, but um, they are so thankful in the DMs and so appreciative of our art. So I, I think it goes more than just the business. Yeah, right? you talk for about sure. that. You know, you, a lot of people that have got on that are doing this kind of work, yeah. either through jewelry, through t-shirts, whatever, and, and putting on designs that is of um, that represents their culture mm-hmm. out there is 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 really just. I think what you talked about just a little bit, like you making that connection, yeah. or even they're out there, they're doing what they're doing, but. At one point in time, they they feel lost, and yeah. for me, we talk about identity mm-hmm. and, and not knowing. Like, okay, uh, so when you give them that jewelry, I think it sparks that yeah. that, that room. Like, you know what? I'm, it's about time I start researching about mm-hmm. home. I maybe you know start planning a vacation back home because we've yeah. never been back home for yeah. so many years. So I think that jewelry, that little jewelry that you give them, I think is is just that thing that they needed to. Yeah. to get back into uh, thinking about home and, and culture and everything. Yeah, they. I mean, I like to say we just need to remember because we don't forget. Mm-hmm. We don't forget. I feel like it's it's already deeply rooted into us who we are. We just kind of need that little push mm-hmm. to help you, you know, remember like, oh, there is this whole culture because it's so easy to get lost um, in a modern world, you Mm -hmm. know, with everything going around and outside influences. And so it's easy to lose sight of culture and Mm -hmm. traditions. And so it's nice that when they connect with us and they do get their pieces, you know, it brings them closer to home. Wow. Beautiful. Inspiring as well. Yeah. Yeah. It motivates me to just to keep on going. Yeah. That's awesome. Christian, we're going to take a break. Mm -hmm. But when we come back, we're going to talk about the future of Saltwater Empress. And maybe not even Saltwater, but you. What do you want to do? And we'll talk about uh, that coming up in just a little bit. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. You're watching the One Mind Future Podcast. BRB. I have a phone. I have no TV. Ooh. TV on phone. Get live TV on your phone or any device with DTV Plus from Docomo Pacific. Watch live channels or stream from your favorite apps on any device, all from your home Wi-Fi. No cable lines, no hassle, more savings. All for only $35 a month with your link bundle. DTV Plus, your cable TV on Wi-Fi. Ooh, TV on phone. MTO Maintenance will now completely sanitize your home, office, or business with state-of-the-art commercial sprayers. For over 30 years, MTO Maintenance has been committed to the health and safety of our customers. And now, more than ever, a clean home, office, carpets, and furniture is a necessity to our island. Give us a call today. Stay healthy and stay safe, Guam. Call 647-6861 for an appointment. Afri and Mogithin, welcome back. One Mike Ninja Podcast. We're still here with Christian Leon Grill, the uh, owner of Saltwater Empress. Uh, we talked about a lot of things. We talked about how it all started for her. She was born in Guam, moved to the States, and then uh, along the way, she found the love to to um, to to carve these these beautiful uh, creations that she does. And then we talked about the business, how it's going, how people are reacting to it. Such an inspiring and 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 uh, such a very inspiring story that you got um so let's talk about it uh the future of saltwater empress of course uh the store right now is online it's on mm-hmm. instagram and yeah. you guys have a website and we do okay. we do have a website um the goal is to one day soon move back home mm-hmm. to have a, a shop where i can carve uh 
hopefully not teach because that is I, I I hold the word teach with high reverence and that's for the masters but maybe kind of mentor people who are interested in getting you know into carving um, we our heart really tells us to do a lot of grassroots charitable work so we are um, working on something called the Katura Party. Wow. And we had our first ever one last year, and it was an amazing night. It was so chill. It was at um, uh, my husband's in-law's mm -hmm. house, and it was, I, I think, about like a group of uh, eight or nine carvers. But the objective of and uh, the mission of the Katura Party is so that us artists can get together and collaborate and create a single piece that has been touched by all of our hands mm -hmm. to auction that piece off to raise money for nonprofit organizations. Wow. So this year we're hoping to have it a public event and um, uh, we'll, we'll talk, we'll share all of that a little bit later. But that's my husband and I, it's a, it's a lot of uh, the, the giving back mm -hmm. is, is what we're really interested in, not just just the profits, you know, for selling. We're interested in truly helping our community through these small efforts because I feel like that there's nothing more tomorrow than helping each other. You know, there's nothing more islander than helping each other, right? It's what they call an ephemeric mm -hmm. and I feel like if we just uh, work together, right, we mm -hmm. can truly see change. So it's those those small passion projects that we're interested in having. We want to come back home. We want to learn how to make Amit, traditional wow. med medicine. We are interested in traditional navigation, um, all the good things, you mm -hmm. know. And I, we know that it's going to, you can't master two things mm -hmm. in a whole entire lifetime. But I feel like if you spend your whole life doing everything that makes you feel whole mm -hmm. and then you do your part to perpetuate that, that's, that's going to be worth it for us. So... That's what it looks like. Hopefully, that's a five-year uh, plan to come back home and really hit the ground running. But um, for right now, we are our our hearts are full, you know, mm -hmm. overflowing with love just from carving. Yeah. Wow. So hopefully soon you'll you'll see a shop, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but we also do like the slow pace of working at home yes. and an intimate setting. <laughs> mm -hmm. My husband and I, uh, he, he does, he helps me a lot too. So yeah, um, hopefully one day, but one thing at a time. I think the thing that's most important to us uh, besides opening a shop mm -hmm. is to really give back more mm -hmm. and to find ways to do that. And we want to uh, do that through collaborative efforts with other people who care about the same thing so we can spark excitement and right. change in other people you know that's nice yeah and and you did a before we did a, we shot your culture club there was an event what did you put that together or was that uh that was our workshop so workshops. uh yeah it was with uh, me kelsey from banana leaf tumblers mm -hmm. and uh meeks from mm -hmm. everything in between and my part uh specifically was uh to make jewelry in front of people. So we didn't have any carving going on, but we had already made pendants mm -hmm. and beads and you know, you, you bought your ticket to come to our workshop and it was a kind of like a semi-custom experience. Nice. It was like a one-on-one -on -one thing and mm -hmm. you sat down with me and we did your measurements and nice. we strung it up how you mm -hmm. liked it. So it was a very intimate setting. That was really fun and I'm thinking I should do another one of that before. I was going to ask, we, are you going to do one more? I, I think I should, yeah. But, it, you know, it takes a long time because, mm -hmm. you know, I also, I didn't want to rush anybody. I I I don't have the opportunity to see my customers face-to-face -face mm -hmm. all the time because we're solely e-commerce. So all we do is we operate on a website. Right. So, yeah, I think I'm going to do another one because should, it, it was should. fun. It's And, you know, you see their, their faces, they mm -hmm. light up, and they don't even care how long it's going to take. <laughs> they just want to, and the, the most, the... The coolest thing is like they don't care how long it's going to mm -hmm. take you. They want to sit in your presence and they want to just vibe. And for us, that means so much, you know, it means that they're they're truly mm -hmm. supporters of you. And, and, yeah, so. and now they're not just an account on Instagram that's that's DMing you. Now you're seeing this, this yeah. person face to face. Yeah. And, and like you talk, you're talking, you're seeing their reactions yeah. as, and you're, you know, you're going back and forth and yeah. chatting and getting to know them. I think that's, yeah. I think that what, that's what really makes um, a, a, any business, uh, you know, yeah. um, uh, it gives it this whole meaning of, of, of why they do things that they yeah. do. And especially with you, why you got to, why you carve, why you make jewelry. Yeah. And um, 
I mean, definitely to inspire uh, yeah. people. That's awesome. All right, Christian, we're going to take a break. But when we come back, it's, it's the last part of it, the final remarks, the where people can find you on social okay. media. We'll do that coming up right yeah. after this. We'll be right back. Half a day. I'm Governor Lou Leon Guerrero, and I'm proud to report that we have opened a new relief center to help you as we continue to recover from the pandemic. From healthcare to welfare, childcare, housing, and utilities, we have a wide variety of direct relief programs available to help you. This central location provides direct access to most of our public assistance programs under one roof. Our friendly staff are ready to help you through the application process. We are working to ensure you get the assistance you need to receive the relief available to you and your family. This means more support to help you meet the cost of living and give you more money in your pocket. We are improving how government is working. Our administration continues to invest in Guam's future, delivering relief and driving our recovery. We are all in this together. Visit the Government of Guam Relief Center at the third floor of the Bank of Hawaii building in Hagatnia, Monday to Friday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Or call us at 671-475-2060. Mobile offers a new and convenient way to fuel your vehicle. Pay gas and go. No need to line up inside the store. Press preset. Enter whole dollar amount without decimals. Press loyalty ID and enter your mobile number or insert smiles card. Insert and remove payment card or tap contactless credit card. Begin fueling. And don't forget to grab your receipt. Pay gas and go. It's that easy. Honey, do you want some milk? Do you ever wonder how your favorite products make their way into your local stores? Most arrive on state-of-the-art mats and vessels, 